Oh, wait, wait. Oh. So we're 31 0. Um, I'm barely starting to get the hang of the game. I'm going to lie and say that I'm getting the hang of the game now. Um, but the game is ending, so. Um, you, you should, you, this was connected to that. Regardless of where you're from or where your family is from, Latinos are passionate people. Just to combine my favorite team and my passion, this is the adrenaline rush. We're going to meet some Latinos who have managed to merge their passion for football with their craft. Our journey begins in Houston, where we met up with a street artist whose work has been heavily influenced by the city and its team, the Texans. So what, we're gonna take a little ride in your car or what? Yeah, let's go. So yeah, we're on the, on the south side of Houston right now. Mm -hmm. And you were born here? Yeah, born and raised. Houston. Born and raised, yeah. Yeah. So how did your parents react when you said you wanted to be an artist? Well, at first they didn't understand it because it was it stemmed off from graffiti, you know, and like at first, you know, graffiti was kind of like, oh, you're kind of, you know, I'm just pintando las paredes, like, you know, like what's going on with you? you know? Here in Houston, you know, like my little upbringing was was, you know, involved in the arts. It's really crazy how I drew a connection and everything in Houston was influenced my art and sport. So whose house is this? This is my buddy Nelson's. Nelson! Alright, alright. How's it going up with David? Nelson, how you doing? So this is uh this is you? This is it, yeah. This is Something little, I painted uh... in 2015 here. Okay. Yeah. A long time ago, I said when I bought my house, my first house, I want you, I'm gonna call you. I said I want you to paint a mural. What exactly you want? I said this has to be Houston Texans. It seems that football is a big deal in Texas. Why do you guys think that is? It's a family, as a fan, as a sport, you know. It's something that we feel as a Houstonian that we have to feel the love of just the sport. And everybody wants some cold beer, some carnitas, some fajitas, some good times, Sunday, relax, you know, praise the Lord on church, and then we go watch some Texans game, you know, that's just the way it is. And it's just something you gear up, you know, you have to feel it. It's, it's not just a sport, it's a culture. It's something that you grow up loving, understanding. Um, it's, it's a passion. We went over to the Texans' tailgate to meet with a Mexican TV producer who has become a committed fan of the team. ¿Cómo empezó tu afición por los Texans? Tenía como esa cosquillita de ir a un juego de la NFL, entonces dije, vamos manejando a Houston, ¿no? Pues qué tan lejos puede estar, ¿no? Llegamos y empezamos a conocer gente alrededor que nos decían, "Oh, nosotros somos Texans, no quieren comer, no quieren una cerveza." Entonces así empezó de wow, si esto es la NFL, o sea, esto es como una familia, ¿no? O sea, ¿Cómo no irle a un equipo que te recibe así? Yo me vine por la experiencia, o sea, conocer a personas nuevas en un lugar ajeno a tu país, en verdad, o sea, les da felicidad verme aquí porque saben el sacrificio que es para nosotros de tan lejos estar en un partido de la It's not just Houston. All over Texas, people are getting creative and showing their passion, as we saw 200 miles north in Dallas. Gis Montoya is a Texas-born rapper who, despite living in Phoenix, has found a home within the Cowboys community through his music. Feed Me, his most popular track, is played in the stadium when the Cowboys reach the red zone. I was yay high, <laughs> probably like 1993. I mean, my mom, she picked me up and put me in front of the old school box TV, and she was like, hey, Watch this game, watch the Cowboys. You're a Cowboys fan. We're all Cowboys fans, you're gonna be a Cowboys fan. I don't think I've ever missed a game since then. I just stuck to it. Always stuck with my team. Never hopped on another bandwagon. <laughs> How did that commitment to the Cowboys start translating into music? I was building my music career and then just took off for me as an organic viral moment. And just to combine my favorite team and my music, my passion, put it all together, it's like, this is the adrenaline rush, you know what I mean? Now the whole of that was just a sneak peek. Okay, they tried to hold them down, we yelling free Zeke. And don't forget who got the crown, I let the numbers speak. Do you think you're changing the perception of Latinos in hip hop, maybe? 
I think so, because there's, there's always stereotypes. You know, certain people don't like rap, and then they heard my song, they're like, man, I don't even like rap music, but when I heard your Cowboy song, you know, I love it, so it's a good feeling. Coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the Dallas Cowboys and the Miami Dolphins. This is Little Havana, a neighborhood unique to Miami that really shows the diversity in the Latino experience here in the U.S. And it's in that diversity of experiences that we find the skills and the craft to truly express our passion. We're going to meet with Blocky, a professional video game player who has made a living playing the football-themed game Madden. I'm the Madden Club Champion for the Dolphins. I represented them the past two years in the club championship. Here's your controller. Cool. Got mine. I guess I'll be going with the Dolphins. Let's do it. And so how did you like get into this? Was this like the first game you picked up or did you like try out a bunch? Uh, really, you know, I've been, I played a lot of games when I was little. It wasn't until, you know, when Xbox One came out, that's the first time I really played Madden. So were you a football fan before? I wasn't too big on football. Well, then Madden is what really made me get into it because uh, you start having you know, favorite players, and then I started watching the NFL, and I already always had the root for the Dolphins. Why the Dolphins? Just the hometown team. When I saw they had uh, a tournament to represent them, I definitely wanted to represent. What was your family's reaction when you told them, like, hey, I want to like try and see if I can play video games for a living? Yeah, we definitely never been like a big, you know, American football family, really. I think it was probably it was two years ago where they started to realize that, you know, I'm actually like playing at a high level and I can actually make good money off the game. And that's when they, you know, they started supporting me a lot more. You know, my dad started watching more and tries to give me advice on the game. And, you know, if he sees something in real life, he says, oh, can I use this in game or, so stuff like that, you know. I know Madden and real life is different, but I try to take it any, any advice I can. So seeing my dad, you know, help me out like that, you know, means a lot to me. So how did that feel? Like knowing that you kind of like converted your family over to football because you started playing Madden? Seeing them watch more football is fun because, you know, I enjoy playing now and I enjoy not only watching the game, but I enjoy playing Madden. So being able to see them, you know, enjoy that too is nice. The latest example. Oh, wait, yeah, they've oh. been solid, really. The whole defense has been solid, still pitching a shutout. So we're 31 0. Um, I'm barely starting to get the hang of the game. I'm going to lie and say that I'm getting the hang of the game now. Um, but the game is ending. So, um, yeah, man, thanks so much for everything. No problem. Thank you. You, you, should, you. This was connected, right? This was like, this was <laughs> Across town, we met with Steven Rivera, also known as Scissorhands. He's become the go-to barber for the Miami Dolphins and other sports teams in the city. I eat, breathe football. Like, I'm around it every day. I never would have thought that like I'd be the team barber for the Miami Dolphins. And it's a dream come true. I grew up down south. Like, I was probably the only Hispanic at the time. You know, it was kind of rough for me, but you know, I managed to pull through, made great friendships in that neighborhood. Now, it wasn't no soccer going on, but it was strictly football. So mm -hmm. that's why I got accustomed to like loving football. Growing up, my parents couldn't really afford like for me to get a haircut. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I gotta learn this. I ended up losing my job like at the time and I met a former player. Me and him became real close. So. He saw my situation and he was like, hey man, I know you cut hair. Why don't you like take it to the next level? And next thing you know, I'm cutting Randy Starks, Reggie Bush, mm -hmm. Cameron Wake. And how does it feel to know that you're supporting your team in this special way? It's a dream come true. It means a lot to me. When they win, I celebrate. When they lose, you know, I'm down. So it's like a, a roller coaster but I, I embrace it because, you know, I love everything about Miami, Florida. And what are some of the styles that you've seen? Like, it's a haircut, it's the, it's the, style, the clothes, it's, what, like, what is the, like, the Miami style? It was a style that was going on, the Mohawks, mm -hmm. but it faded away. And then, other than Mohawk, is high top fade. Here in Miami, we take serious haircuts, so you can't just get any typical haircut, like, there's a lot of women in Miami, so <laughs> you, you might find the right one. Right. So you got to make sure you're looking good at any time. So. <laughs> so it seems like things are a little bit flashier here in Miami, no? Yeah, it is. We're really known for gold. I saw some, like, a little bit of gold outside in your driveway. Oh, yeah. That's my baby right there. That's what I actually go make my rounds when I go 
to all my players' houses. Can we take a ride in that? Yeah, or? we can take a ride. I gotta. Sh- hey, listen, if you if you're in Miami, you gotta go in that car to okay. really feel the Miami. I uh, jump in that car. Wherever I'm going, it's gonna be known. Oh, that's Steve outside right there. Oh yeah, he cuts hair. He come to cut hair. Dude. <laughs> All these young Latinos have one thing in common. They have taken their unique craft and infused it with their passion for football. In the same way that the Latino experience is different for everybody, fans find ways to make their team On the next episode of Americano, we explore the future challenges and possibilities of Latinos in football. There's a lot of Hispanics out there. Every year, players get bigger, longer, faster. All the people that doubt and look down want to prove them up.